Hello Abnormal Family. I bet y'all are wondering what's going on today. It's a three video drop day today guys. Yep, we're dropping three. The one you're watching now at three o'clock, there'll be one at seven and one at nine. So, also, if you would like to support the Bringing Hunter home, all the information is in the description of this video. Let's get into this one guys. It was a sunny day. Me and my friend were hanging in the park. The park was nice, and we would spend most of our time there. We would love to play at the park. We are a strange group. We would like to role play, play action games outside, and a lot of violence. We would get rough sometimes, but we would just take it in stride. We always were curious why there was a bunker-like house in the building. It was right next to the park in the forest. It had a metal door and a glass window with metal wires in them. And the windows were barred. It looked strange and suspicious. It had a big brown fence, which was odd. But we brushed it off thinking it was some guy who wanted to have his own house with a garden. Because we live in an urban area, there are no free space for house anywhere for miles. So yeah, that day I was with one of my friends. His name is Forum because we are from different countries, so I'm going to make up names for both of us. Let's say his name is Tyler and mine is Eric now. We were just talking in the park and making jokes, like we always do. We have a really, and I mean really, good sense of humor. So sometimes we act normally when around other people there and retarded when it's only us alone. We decided we would go get my flashlight and explore the little forest part and scare each other for fun purposes. When we went to my home and came back, it was already getting dark. We waited an hour and a half. It was already pitch black in the forest. We continued going through the forest. When we were halfway there, <clears throat> I gave him the flashlight because he was begging me to give it to him so he could see everywhere. He flashed up the trees and a bunch of crows were flying off of it making a bunch of sound. <laughs> we got scared and we laughed it all out. And let me just say, that day is not a creepy at all and it looks like just part of a land with some trees. But in the night, it looks like I'm in the middle of a huge forest. About a couple of more minutes had stopped. I asked, what is it? What do you see? He just said, look over there. I looked and I saw a big dog-like creature. It was shocked because as a kid, I would always like to say to my friends, I hope someday I see a werewolf. It's complicated. When I saw those two glowing big red eyes, everything I'd wished had changed. I didn't want to see it no more. I was noping so much that I almost said it out loud. I wanted to run, but I couldn't leave my friend. I froze for a moment, but came back to reality. I just said, run, and we started bolting out of there. We were running like never before. He was in the front of me because I let him take the lead. He was much taller and stronger, but I was faster. When we got nearly there, I slipped and I fell in the mud because we were laughing at everything, and I was laughing because he was afraid. Kind of that scared laugh you do when you're afraid you don't want to cry so you laugh. He came back and helped me up and when we got there he started laughing. I was scared. I think he was too and we just couldn't help ourselves. This probably looks ridiculous and shameful. But that's what happened. When we got a glimpse of the forest again we saw a big dark silhouette rush on the other side of the forest. Now I did see it. And it was on all four legs at the time that I seen this thing. It looked like a large coyote. This thing was now crossing to the other side and was watching us. We started trying to make our way out of the park because we knew that we had to get back home. But also we did not want this thing to come up behind us and get us. So we were shining the flashlight into the woods. It seemed as long as we kept the light on it. It would stay in the darkest, most shadows, it wouldn't follow us as fast, and it would even sometimes just stay to sit still as long as the light was on it. But it was hard to see to go home without the light in front of us, so sometimes we would have to switch the light to in front of us, and when we did, let me tell you, it moved fast, it would make up the distance. And as we were exiting the park, there's a street light on the corner. And as we stood underneath that street light, we then seen something we both wish we had never seen. It came out and it pranced across the park. It then jumped up onto one of the picnic tables. 
staring at us. We're walking away slowly, watching this creature with our light on it. And that's when it done the one thing we both wish we had never seen. It stood on its hind legs and started beating its chest with its arms. This sounded like you were hitting a piece of wood together. Loud cracks, really loud clacks. And then it sprung from the table off of two legs, grabbed onto the large tree that was there. We believe it was a pecan tree. And it climbed the tree like a cat. I mean, it was fast. This thing was so agile to be so large. And as we turned and we started to run, it let out a huge howl, almost like a scream. We ran as hard as we could with our hearts pounding in our chest. I have no idea what we seen that night. But whenever we told my mom and dad, my dad looked us straight in the eyes and said we had seen a dog man. And they have been known to be around these parts. And we asked him what the old concrete house was with the fence around it. He said it was an old military bunker that was no longer in use, but we should stay away from it because it was private property and not safe. To this day, we have not been back to that bunker, and I don't plan on it. Whatever that was that night scared me so bad that I don't care to ever see it again. I have not been back to that park, and neither has my friend. I hope you all enjoyed this encounter more than I did. I hope to never have another one, but feel it's important to share our encounters. Thank you, Mike, for sharing it. Thank you for sharing that encounter. Um, <clears throat> as far as climbing the trees, I hear that a lot. I even experienced that at my granny's. I seen them in the trees, and they would climb the trees and howl from the trees, scream from the trees, whistle from the trees. Um, they are very, it seems, uh, comfortable in trees. As far as the military house having anything to do with it i don't know if it did or not i would say that if it was locked and bars on the windows and stuff that it probably did not come from there it's probably something that's been around or was passing through that night and happened to uh, run into you guys because you're out there in the middle of the dark with the light in the woods where most people don't you know most people don't do that so it's seen you and probably seen an opportunity and it probably had ill intention towards you I'm glad that you all did use the light. It seems that light is a very good weapon against these things and does keep them at a distance. But could you imagine if one thing in that light that night would have failed and you would have been left in the dark with it? If you would have slipped and fell and the flashlight would have broke or the little wire and the bulb would have disconnected or the batteries or something and you would have been in the dark? Then what would have happened to you? Those are things I think we need to think about. That's why I carry multiple extra lights. Until next time, guys, keep your head on a swivel. Don't be something's dinner. And don't give them the opportunity to catch you where you're most vulnerable.